Good morning and thank you for joining us here on Sunrise at Sea. You're just in time for wellness with me, Sandra Corp. And what we are discussing this morning is spiritual wellness, the power of prayer. And in studio with me, I am joined by Sheikh Kasim Kaira, who is an Imam, Islamic scholar, and also a renowned journalist. Good morning, sir. Good morning, Sandra. How are you today? I'm fine, thank yeah, you. Yeah. Thank you for coming in. I know Friday is your special day. <laughs> Thanks you for made having the time me. To come pleasure. In. Yes, no. <laughs> it really means so much. Thank you very much. So today we are discussing a spiritual wellness and particularly the power of prayer. Mm -hmm. And many people don't get to understand what prayer is. They just think, oh, first of all, I don't have much time for it. They don't really make time for it. But when you really think about it, prayer is the, it is conversations mm -hmm. with a higher being, right. the creator. Absolutely. It is a conversation. Many people think that prayer is a dialogue. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's a monologue, but mm -hmm. it's actually a dialogue. Mm -hmm. Because when you speak to God, he speaks back to you. Absolutely. In actions, in yes. ways. Yeah. So let us see the power of prayer, the magnitude. Can you please give us insight into this? Because many people don't understand. They are so busy doing all other things and they just want to pray for five minutes. Except that little five yes. minutes which they, they dedicate to the God who is the source of all that power. Mm. You no, know, the power of prayer, as you say, Sandra, is uh, I think prayer is at the heart of our lives just in terms of how we relate to that supreme being that you have referred to. Yes. It doesn't matter what faith you are. Uh, whether you're Muslim, as I am, or you're Christian, or you know, you're Buddhist, or whatever, or even atheist. Surprisingly, even the atheists who some, a lot of times don't believe there is a God. There's a time we were in the middle of a flight, mm. um, and a, a Kenya Airways a plane had just crashed uh, in Cameroon after leaving Douala or Douala, Yaoundé. Yes, yes. Uh, that plane that crashed and killing everybody on board. Mm. So the, the, the memories were still fresh. Mid-air, our own flight now starts getting into a turbulent sort of situation. Yeah. So the turbulence in the plane now started, you know, getting us to a feeling that probably we were about to face our own Lord. So yes. while everybody is just, you know, deep in prayer, a man who had claimed to be an atheist while we were waiting in the, in the lounge, <laughs> in, the, in, the, in the departure lounge, suddenly goes, oh my God. And I found that quite revealing. I just thought, oh God, give me an opportunity to be alive. So that once we land, I'll just go to this man and tell him the God he was referring to, who doesn't exist. <laughs> so there's, there's just that sort of, so, but with prayer, it's, it's a kind of a relationship that you, you grow with your God. And as, as you said, the moment you go for prayer, the assumption and the assurance is because faith is built around the unseen, that we are asking a God for something that we want, or a supreme being for what we want, Absolutely. in anticipation that we are going to get it. From an Islamic perspective, for example, there is a, a, a belief, a full belief, that whenever you pray to God, three things, one of three things happens. The first thing is, he will give you what you've asked for, and therefore you get it. So you pray for it, you get it. Yes. But there are times when we pray and we imagine that probably what we are asking for is what is good for us. But God knows that if, for example, there are times you're, you're a poor person, all of us are looking at being well, becoming rich and, you know, enhancing ourselves. And the idea is you're working so hard. We wake up so early. Sandra, you're here this morning, you know, dressed up and ready to fight. But it's about improving your, your, your lifestyle, your livelihood, to becoming rich, becoming a wealthy person. God looks at that person, probably one of the people that is asking and thinks and knows, actually it's not about thinking, God knows that if he made you rich at, at a particular time, you might actually become a problem. It's all so about his time. So while, while you are still praying, while you are asking so much, God is saying it's not your time, it's not your time. So it might be a postponement of, of, of your ask. You've asked, but God says not now at a later date. Mm. Of course, because we have been denied the ability to know what his response is in terms of you know, getting an inspiration to say, God has says, wait. God has said, wait, and because you don't know that, but you keep pushing. And I think that, that, that known unknown is in itself very powerful and, and, and revealing. The th unknown. Yes, it's, it's, an, it's a it's known, a known unknown. unknown. So we, yes. we, we know it's known because we are asking and we're expecting to be given, but it's but unknown because we don't know the timing of that. The third thing is where God decides to give you an alternative. You've, you've seen someone, you've fallen in love with them, you just think if you get them, your life will be complete. 
But God is saying, if this person comes into your life, they might just actually be the end of your life. And God decides to bring somebody totally else, someone you ever, never, never imagined. And then you end up living a happy life with this person who you didn't think mm. you could actually be, you know, in cahoot with. And now that, those are the three principles. That the first principle you can, you can be given upon asking, which is immediate. Yes. The other one is postponement of giving. It is coming, but it is waiting for a period. Yes. The third one is the alternative that God decides, this is not for you. Have this and you'll be at peace. And that is quite that is quite true. I feel yes, God does answer all prayers, mm -hmm. but sometimes His answer is no. <laughs> and, and even a no is an answer. Yes, which is it good. Is. It is. So yes. we don't get. We don't. I feel that maybe people look at prayer the wrong way. They mm -hmm. look at it as maybe going into a supermarket right. and saying, "I want this. I want that. I want that. I want this." Mm -hmm. But doesn't it run deeper because? Even if you have faith, like you said, even if you have faith, faith is all about works. Yes. Do your best and God will do the rest. Mm -hmm, yes. Mm -hmm. So you're just not going to pray and stay there and wait for him to give you. No. Mm -hmm. Even the Bible and the Quran talks about work, about putting in the work. Mm -hmm. But what I am thinking, and somebody told me something that was so profound. There are two most important days in one's life. Mm -hmm. The day you're born and the day and you the find day. your purpose. Yes. Because we are created... Uh, we are created in God's image and we are co-creators mm -hmm, with him. Mm -hmm. So I feel that if we are going to, to approach him in prayer, we need to know what he asks of us. If we have found our purpose, then only then can he channel to give us what we want. Because we go and ask for things and mm -hmm. it is not aligned with our purpose. Mm -hmm. So w w how can you advise the, us? There is a strength in prayer, which is, there are actually two types of prayer. The first prayer is where we are asking. Yes. And prayer is not just about asking. That's the easiest one because whether we like it or not, we are going to be in need. And if you're yes. in need, you're asking. So if you're asking while you're in need, you do not have much of an option. You didn't have an option not to ask because you are in need. The difficult part of prayer, which is the second bit, is the gratitude of, is the prayer of gratitude. Once you've been given, the ability to sort of look back and say, I'm now living the grace that God has provided me. That, I think, is the most difficult one. Because if you're in trouble, you will ask for help. It's not, it's not a choice issue. If you're in deep poverty, you're in abject poverty, you're struggling, you do not need anyone to remind you that you should be asking. But once you've got it, because many people forget, you become rich and you just think it was actually in your own hands. It, mm. it was my effort, it was my hard work. But there are people working harder than you. How comes they haven't got it? And I think that's where the psyche works. It doesn't matter what religion you're in. Still, Absolutely. I mean, in these wellness aspects. But there, there is comfort. There is fulfillment in prayer. The prayer especially of gratitude. Because when you have been given and you have it, you would have imagined that since you have it all, it shouldn't really matter whether you start going, you know, going back to that, that God. But you're asking also God to, first of all, accept the, the, the sacrifices that you're making in this instance. So like, for example, going to church or going to the mosque, giving your tithe, mm -hmm. helping poor people, you know, coming into the, doing charitable organizations. You, you are doing all of this now to show gratitude. You're saying, God, you gave me, I'm in a better place than where I was. I can help a few people. That in itself, actually, the, the, the belief is saying that the, the giving hand is much more powerful than the receiving hand. Because the hand that is receiving is so much in need that if, it, if, if there wasn't anything, then trouble probably could have arose. But the hand that is giving is sort of saying, I have it. I could have used it on my own self, but I'm deciding to, to give, give it. it to you. I'm deciding to share it. The person who has been given feels indebted and the person who has given feels relieved. There's a kind of relief that comes with that giving. And these are all fundamentals that are built around the belief and understanding of, uh, of faith, of prayer, of the power of prayer. I've asked God, he's given me, it's time to give back. That in itself has a very satisfying aspect. In fact, for example, uh, sorry, from a, an Islamic perspective again, uh, when you talk about, for example, uh, the, the blessing, everybody works. Everybody can earn some money. Yes. But there's a hidden secret that is in that money, which is what we call in an Arabic baraka, the blessing in the money. It's a kismet. Uh, kismet is, is, is a kismet. No, kismet would be, uh, kismet would Luck. be, not uh, fate. 
Kismet is fate, yeah, because it comes from the, the, the perspective that everyone has been apportioned a certain, a certain portion of, of the wealth that is in the world. Mm. So when you get, what you get is your kisma. Kisma is a, is a portion. So you are apportioning. Everyone mm. has been apportioned something. But then when we talk about the baraka, baraka is the blessing that comes in the wealth. There are people who get money and they are unhappy. Yes. There are people who get money and they are sleepless as if they are in Seattle, and um, <laughs> <laughs> pun intended. So, because you're waking up, movie. every time you want to go to bed, the first thing you're thinking, oh my God, in Japan now they've woken up, I need to check the markets. Mm. As you're beginning to sleep now, you know, in the United States, the, the Nasdaq, I need to check. Mm. I need to check the FTSE 100, what's happening in the, in the UK. You are actually sleepless, yet you have it all. You would have imagined that you would allow the money to work for you. So prayer brings this sense of comfort, a sense of fulfillment. It becomes a vehicle. It's, it's both a, a destination but also a vehicle towards the destination. That through this you feel that kind of relaxation. You're sort of saying, I've worked so hard. It's time to enjoy. But between enjoying and working too hard, there is that belt that mm. has to actually move every process. And prayer comes in that. Wake up at night, 30 minutes, one hour maybe even 15 minutes and, and then go back to sleep. I think, do you think that most people don't realize this because they can have it all, mm -hmm. but they're unhappy, like yes. you're saying. Yeah. And um, I, I, I learned this in discipleship class and it really changed my line of thought. And mm -hmm. it's all about God's mercy and mm -hmm. God's grace. Mm -hmm. And getting to understand these two things yes. can make you have a lot of gratitude. Absolutely. Because his mercy is giving you what you deserve, not giving you what you deserve. Mm -hmm. That's his mercy. Mm -hmm. And his grace is giving you what you don't deserve. Yes. So when, you, when I understood this, I'm like, I am so lucky. Mm -hmm. And you have this gratitude. And having an attitude of gratitude is the way to go through life. But just to take you back a little bit, Many people, like they can say they pray, mm. but they feel a disconnect. Mm. Because I feel uh, prayer, doesn't prayer come with spirituality? Believing that there is a higher being, it's just not the words, mm. but it is the faith. So believing in a higher being, mm. this is very important to be able to be connected in prayer. And uh, as we wrap up right now, we Christians are going through the period of Lent, Lent yes. the period that you go through in Ramadan. Ramadan yes. And we, we fast mm -hmm. during this time. Mm. So how is how can someone channel this? Because fasting is very close to prayer. Yes. The Prophet, Prophet Muhammad, he used to fast on Monday oh, and yes. Thursday. Mondays and Thursdays, just yes. the option of the option of prayer. The yes. option of fasting, yes. Yes, he did. What mm. what is the connection and the spirituality mm. involved in all this? Is is it a form of penance during this holy period? Mm -hmm. I, I, I think it, it matters, it sort of cuts across situations. One, it, it's one way of strengthening faith. Like you said, uh, faith is not constant. Faith will fluctuate. The faith fluctuates on the basis of the circumstances that you're going in. If you're going through a very difficult time, your faith actually might be very high or very low. Because you get to a question where you start, where you point where you start questioning God, you're sort of saying, if this God is there, why would I be suffering the way I am suffering? And, uh, but for somebody else, you're sort of saying, oh God, this is your test. I'm taking it. I'm taking it in stride. I'm staying here. God has promised me, he says, ask me and I'll give you. That comfort alone of the hope that I don't know the moment that is coming, but it is there. When you live in this kind of hope, it is the best. I think in Luganda, they've got a particular saying, which is quite funny. They say, Bera mugumunga asura kutaka. Because when you sleep, when you're on the ground, you, you don't have the fear of falling off the bed. You're already there. You are <laughs> <laughs> you're, you're already there. Because, so that, that, that kind of belief, I think, so the faith fluctuates. Because of this fluctuation, you need a balancing filter, a factor that is going to try to bring the pH to a level that is acceptable. A constant. A sort of a constant that is going to help. Actually, you need a, a sort of a, a least common denominator, which is going to help to balance it up. So because your faith is going up and down, one of the things that would help to do that is elements like fasting. Fasting other than the health benefits that come to the body, you know, because your body needs to detox. Yes. And through fasting, the, the body manages to, de to detox. It burns the extra fat that is there. As a result, you find that actually your life improves a lot. But beyond that, in the context, for example, you've mentioned the, the, the church aspect in Islam, 
the Prophet وسلم, Muhammad said, O oh, young men, whoever amongst you can get married, let them get married. For those who do not have the means to get married, let them fast. It will be better for their bodies. So beyond just the thing, there is also the killing the sexual urge that would have led people into, you know, into serious problems. When you mm. fast, the urge is taken away. The, the hunger pangs now come mm. into play and they contribute in one or another. So when you fast, it channels. You, you get to sort of declutter all these other life's trivial things that we, that, <laughs> yes. that we do. Yes. And you get to focus. So this channels your spirituality as Plus, a Plus, for example, if a poor person came to you and said, I'm hungry. Having experienced the hunger that you you, you, have you, you, you you have, the empathy comes in. But on the basis of the fact that you are fasting, but you have something. This is one is there, is fasting forcibly because they do not have what to eat. So it, automatically now it gets into your pocket. It has got from your chest, gets into your pocket, and that translates into changing someone's life. So and that changing instance, your life as well. Absolutely. There, there, there is that fulfillment that goes with seeing the smile on someone's face that you've managed to help. Whenever you see someone sort of crying tears of joy, sort of saying thank you to you, there is a, there is a way it humbles you. You almost feel like you should be the one saying thank you because you, you, you've, they've allowed you to be a part of their life in changing their life in one way or another, even if it is for a day. That's that very, very powerful. Profound. Yeah. Quite profound, yeah. Thank you, thank you for coming in Pleasure. today and discussing with that with our spiritual wellness and the power of prayer. Pleasure, we have to let you go. I mean, today is a Friday after all. But you thank welcome. you for coming in. Well, that was all we had for you on wellness this morning with um, <laughs> with the good shake here in studio with us. But we have to go right now. But we'll be right back. So stay on, stay at sea. <laughs>